One strike on Colin Thompson. Ocean City with a chance to get on the board early here as they get their first two men on base. A walk in an air. If you're Thompson here and you try to lay down the button, you want to make sure to deaden it as much as you can, but not enough where they could potentially turn two. Of course, he squares up this one. He lines it into left field and gets by all the way to the wall. That's going to be at least two runs. The throw into third base, and it's quickly 2 nothing. Ocean City. That was a good piece of hitting by Thompson. He went the other way with it and lashes it to left field, and another error leads to the second run. Yeah, that's about as fundamental baseball as you can get, is having your glove on the ground, and we've seen it uh, go against Millville twice. McGuire not able to feel the comebacker to him, and out there in left field, uh, not able to keep the glove down either. So not a great start for Millville. Ocean City with two runs on the board after just three batters. And sorry, that's actually Kevin Dick in left field, not at third base, which I think I mentioned earlier. The third baseman is Brady Middlecoff. 1-0 count on the cleanup batter, Matt Pashley. He is the pitcher for the Red Raiders this afternoon. And his team has already given him the lead. Let's see if he can add to it. He's going to bunt. And that's going to be a throw over to first base Ooh. in time, moving the runner up to third. A bit of a high throw from McGuire to Lacey, but he's able to stretch up while keeping his foot on the bag. So the first out's a good one, but you want to find a way to strand that runner at third if you can't. Ryan Baldwin and Travis Large are the next two hitters for Ocean City. Baldwin is the catcher for the Red Raiders. Yeah, unsurprisingly, Millville playing in. See if they can cut off anything to the plate if need be. If you're Thompson, I think you gotta make sure that ball gets out of the infield before you take a stab at home. He gets the strike call there on the outside corner. Evens the Ooh. count of one ball and one strike. And that one bounces to McGuire at the plate, but a good job of staying in front of it. Ready with the 1-1 one, one offering. Tried an off-speed pitch, but it's down low. Nice job by Butcher to keep that in front of him. Two balls and one strike on Ryan Baldwin. That sails high. Yeah, this is not ideal for McGuire if he wants to go deep in this game. He's already thrown a ton of pitches in this first inning and still only one out. Three one offering to the plate from McGuire sails outside and another walk, his second walk of the inning. Have to wonder if you're Baldwin, if you're gonna try and take second here. Odds are they're not gonna throw as we are gonna have a pinch runner. That's number two, Jackson. Ooh, you can go ahead and oh, give it a shot here. Give it a shot for me. Gayeski? Gayeski, we'll say Gayeski. Uh, he's gonna do the running here. Again, same situation though. You have to wonder if he's gonna try and swipe second because I don't think you throw with a runner on third. Uh, tries to bunt that pitch was high, so that's a bit of a gift strike for Millville there. Yeah, that was pretty much a situation of Lars just trying to put the ball in play no matter what. So that was a bunt all the way. It was if you can get your bat on it, get on. So wonder if Ocean City's maybe trying a suicide squeeze here. 0 oh, 1 pitch from McGuire is outside. I take that back because he doesn't offer. Well, they have two runs in. That runner at third. Not sure if there would be a butt here. He is offering, but the pitch is down low. Runner goes to second, yep, that's, uncontested. That's kind of exactly what I expected. I was surprised he hadn't taken a bigger lead earlier on, but the fact that it got just enough away from Butcher behind the plate and could have had a chance, but you're not going to take the chance that the runner from third comes in. Look at the lead that Gayeski's getting off the bag. Um, no from one's holding him on. So. Swing and a miss. Two balls and two strikes. 
So yeah, large is really helping out McGuire here. He's chased two completely out of the strike zone. Well, that's smart uh, where the Gayeski's all the way halfway to third base <laughs> because nobody's even watching him behind the play. That's smoked into left field. Another run, maybe two. As Dick gets the ball into play, cut off at third base. And just like that, it is 4-0 Ocean City on the two-run single from Travis Large. Yeah, he got all of that one, drove it right into the perfect spot, allowing both to score. I mean, it was pretty clear Gaski was going to score on that one, considering he was pretty much even with Middlecoff over at third base. Yeah, with that kind of lead, he had a pretty good chance of scoring, and he does. 4 nothing, Red Raiders, still only one out, pitch is low. Yeah, Butcher's doing a good job behind the plate of keeping things in front of him, but McGuire's got to find the strike zone on a consistent basis. one nothing lead for Ocean City, getting off to the kind of start that every team likes to have. Pitches a strike, so it's now one and one, correct? One and one count. One and one. Yes. Cam Street is the batter, seventh batter of the inning. And again, Cam Street, another one of their top hitters, has five RBIs and a home run on the season. Most of his hits coming in their last game. He had a pretty good outing against Buna in the 20 to one win. Again, it's only three games, so it's about nine plate appearances at most for each player, but see, swing and a miss on that one. Betting 750, again, only in nine plate appearances, but that's still a strong start to the season and exactly why Ocean City is where they are right now. Count even to two balls and two strikes. Runner at first base is Travis Large. Popped up and foul. The street taking some good hacks at the ball right now. Center fielder playing pretty deep. Otherwise, right and left are about halfway, maybe. Another 2-2 pitch coming from McGuire, and he went around. Now, he's, now he, can't he can't go, can't to, go first, to first yeah. because it's occupied, so that'll be a strikeout. And that's a huge second out for McGuire. Street was ready to hit, but unfortunately couldn't hold the bat back enough. But we're still up to the eighth batter of this inning, Kyle Williams. Williams the lefty, first baseman. First pitch is fouled off to the left side. McGuire checks the runner, comes to the plate, nice curveball. Breaking pitch that catches the plate, so he's quickly out in front of the count 0-2. And that's the best that McGuire's done so far in terms of an at-bat getting ahead of the batter, so if he can get the pitch right there, limit the damage. Grabbed it towards Lacey, nice scoop, and he'll just tag the bag to end the inning, but it's a good one for the visitors. They start off the game with four runs on two hits, two errors in the inning, and just the one man left. So after a half inning, Ocean City has four runs on the board. Millville will get its first crack at the bat after we return. At Mintz Insurance, we're proud to have been serving our customers for nearly 80 years, offering 30 different insurance products for your auto, home, and business, and to help ensure that you're getting the best rates possible. So it's a good uh, start to the at-bat for Sergio Draws. He would love to be a leadoff runner, considering the way that top of the first went. Yeah, Melba wants to find a way to get base runners on any way that they can. That pitch sails high, 3-0, and and it's similar to the start McGuire had. Three balls to start the count. Ashley readies with the 3-0 pitch. Gets the strike on that call. Yeah, that's all you're going to do there if your draws up 3-0. Unless it's something you absolutely can't lay off of, you're going to take that strike. 
Next offering is fouled straight back, and the count is now full on Sergio Draz. He'll be followed by Connor Lacey and Kevin Dick, the first three batters for Millville. Payoff pitch on the way right now. And that sails high, so a good eye for Draws, and he draws the leadoff walk. That brings up Connor Lacey, number four, the first baseman for the Millville Thunderbolts. Draws takes his edge off of first base. Pitch is low. One zero pitch is actually uh, throw over to first base and draws his back safely. That is drilled in the hole. That's going to find right field. Lacey with a hit. Draws will pull up at second base. So Millville has its first two runners aboard. Draws at second, Lacey at first. And that's nice hitting by Lacey to drive the ball right between the first and second baseman to get something going for Millville. Yeah, he definitely put it where no one could make a play on it. Good stroke there, and the first two men are on board for the Thunderbolts, trailing 4 nothing, looking to chip away at this lead in the bottom of the first. And it's just missing. Kevin Trying Dick. Uh, certainly wants to make up for that play in left field where the ball got under his glove and two runners for Ocean City scored. So with two runners on, no outs, a good opportunity for him to try and make something happen. Pitches outside. Dick showed a possible bunt there, but he pulls it back and is now in a favorable 2-0 count. Yeah, good pitch recognition from Dick. That ball was well off the plate. We'll see if they have the same idea here. Draws getting his edge off second, Lacey off first. Foul straight back, and had there not been an offense there, I might have seen the ball hit me in the nose. Yeah, that might have been the end. Okay. Yeah, that, that might have been the end of my Because that was about dead center. Yeah, that was. I don't know, that might have just split <laughs> between us. I think that goes just between well, us. There's enough of a gap here. Considering how but thankfully there's a fence. straight on that view was for me, I think it would have caught my face, but that's okay. And I still blinked knowing there's a fence there. Uh, that one sails high. Wild pitch, and everybody's going to move up. So the two runners now in scoring position. Draws takes third. Lacey's now at second. And Pashley having some trouble on the mound as McGuire was in finding the strike zone, but he's missing by a lot. Three one offering is popped up out of play. And you know, Dix is trying to fight that one off, but that one was a bit inside and he got jammed a bit. Luckily went out of play. So the count is full three and two. Payoff pitch on the way. That's drilled into the gap, and that's going to find some grass. All the way back to the wall. We're going to get two runs on the board for Millville. A two-run double for Kevin Dick, and there you go. He does atone for the two runs he gave up. Big time hit by Kevin Dick. Up and he battled a bit in that one as well. You go back to the pitch right before that where he probably doesn't have to swing. Gets jammed on a ball inside and manages to foul it off. And next pitch gets something he loves and drills it to where no one can get it. And that's the answer you want if you're Millville. And still no outs in the inning either. Maybe we're going to get one of those slugfests. And I do believe, oh, never mind. I thought for a second, uh, forgot what base <laughs> Dick was on. I was like, we pinch running. But uh, Kevin Dick standing over there on second base. Hoping his teammates can keep it going. 
Jacob Butcher looks at a strike down the middle. I tell you, there was some nice movement on that pitch from Pashley. One strike pitch, did he offer? No, the umpire yeah. says he did not. I think he pulled back just in time because up until about the last second, it looked like he was gonna offer at it. So the count evens at one ball and one strike. There's nobody out here and Millwall has chopped the deficit in half. Four to two the score. One one pitch lays off of it. He indicated bunt once again. That pitch didn't hit the strike zone, but Pashley has some movement on that off speed. And that almost curved back in. You see Kevin Dick there at second base hoping to complete his circuit of the bases for Millville's third run. And that's down the middle. Maybe it caught the outside corner, but it caught a lot of the plate. That's all that matters. Yeah, you think at this point, Butcher's not going to be looking for the bunt anymore. That one was a pretty good one to offer at. Unfortunately, he didn't recognize it. At this point, he's going to square up. Or, no? He is bunting, and, and he fouls it off. And that's the first out of the inning. That's why I didn't think you, you'd... You hardly bunt with two outs just because if you foul it, even if you foul it off, yeah. it's an out. Yeah. So that that's. First out of the inning, yeah. So, <laughs> wasted opportunity for. Ryan's having one of those days. <laughs> a wasted opportunity for Butcher. See if Caleb Hoffman can pick him up as there's nobody on second base, so well, you Pashley do, just kind of walking dick yeah, back you to. you just want to keep him honest, and that's exactly what Matt Pashley did there, make sure he wasn't going anywhere. So again, Caleb Hoffman, the DH, batting for McGuire. Takes a strike on the lower part of the plate. Hey, sometimes it's hard to tell from up here. I should say the lower whether, part of the strike zone. Whether or not a pitch is too low or not, but that may just be because I'm short. Well, we could always try to look at the monitor too. That doesn't help. But we like to look at the short, field. We, so. we like to see the action as it happens. There's a wild pitch, and that'll move the runner to third. Kevin Dick is now one base away from getting Millville's third run. Yep. So keep an eye if Pashley loses a hold of another one, and it gets far enough away. We know this backstop is not that far behind the catcher, so if it gets behind him, you got to be really certain. If you're going to go, as Hoffman's going to take a second. And of course, if the ball kind of ricochets to either side, you got a chance to score. But we'll see how it goes on this 1 1 pitch. Called the ball. It looked like it was just a touch high. Caleb Hoffman looking to bring home that third run for Melville with this at bat. And he swings through it. Evens the count of two balls and two strikes. It looked like, tough to tell from this angle, looked like he might have just been above it. On the 2-2 pitch. Oh, beautiful. Oh, yep. Off-speed pitch, and he perfected that one. So technically back-to-back -back strikeouts. The uh, foul ball on the bunt counts as a strikeout. Now he strikes out in a more traditional fashion. Well, Noble would like to get that third run home, though, so right now it's up to Brady Middlecoff to do it. Noble third baseman awaiting the first pitch to him. Swings through it. Nice heat there. Might have been a little high, but that's the kind of ball batters they just can't lay off of. And he was well behind the fastball by the time he swung the bat. And yeah, because those kind of pitches, if you can get a hold of them, can usually go a far distance. Oh, and that's right there also. You know, it's funny how pitchers can find the strike zone after missing so many times. Those two pitches were his best two of the inning. 
Yeah, Pashley's digging back for that heat. Have to wonder if he goes to the off speed, though, to fool him. Swing and a miss. So three pitches, three strikes, and three outs now. But Millville does make a response here in the bottom of the first. They get two runs on two hits. No errors and one man left on third. So we are done with one. Ocean City leads four to two. And we'll take a look at this last hit. I believe this is Kevin Dick's double. Or That's strikeout. No, I couldn't tell if there was anybody else on base. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is your hometown team for banking. We offer banking, which is small town focused and customer based. We know you and we are for you. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is a nonprofit and federally insured. Solid as a Thunderbolt airplane, we are your team. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union, 1601 Cedar Street. Hi, I'm Bob Millard, president of Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union. Come see us and experience banking as it used to be. High School Baseball. It's live on Twin Broadcasting. A good inning for both squads, a better one for Ocean City. As far as the offense, looks like both teams have it going pretty well. 4-2 to two Ocean City leads as we start the top of the second inning. And this is where you want those shutdown innings. Gavin McGuire would certainly love to have a better second inning than he did first inning. Find a way to command the strike zone and have a little bit better fielding out there all the way around. The 9-1 and 2 hitters do up for Ocean City. This is Dan Leiser, the DH for the Red Raiders. He looks at ball one. And Lies are batting for, again, Ed Wisham, the center fielder. A little bit high, 2-0. and yeah, Good job by Lies to lay off that one. That came off the shoulder just a bit, but recognized it was too high. Wire can't get the breaking pitch to find the plate. And just like the first batter of the first inning, Ocean City has a 3-0 count on the leadoff man. Four pitch walk. Third walk issued by McGuire. And now the top of the order is up. Cole Larson, he walked his first time up and scored the game's first run. That's sales high. And McGuire really has no control of the strike zone right now. In fact, he's getting further and further out of it these last few pitches. Kaiser getting a pretty good lead off first base. That's a strong pitch, good fastball for the strike. Pitchers always know they can go to the fastball when they need a strike. We saw that with Pashley last inning where he threw three straight heaters. McGuire trying to use the same tactic. See the lead there. That's a pretty decent lead. And Lizer is going. That's hit pretty. No, it's in shallow. Get fooled with the trajectory. That was an easy play for Kevin Dick. It looked like he was going to go further. And it it's basically the bad died. Sound. Yeah, it's the sound. And there's no wind either. So, no, uh came out here for the game against the prep and the wind was blowing pretty well where um, Connor Lacey specifically had a couple hits in that one that could have been home runs and it being easy pop outs because of the wind dying. But today, I don't think there's maybe a tiny breeze in the air, but if somebody gets a hold of one, it should make it. Evan Taylor had one of those excuse me hits well, that went under the glove of the pitcher, so we scored it in there. He reached base on that and came around to score. Nikki 
keep an eye on Lizer over there. He attempted the steal before the pop out. And another 3 0 count. Macy doing his best to hold him on, but he's getting a pretty good lead over there. You know, we mentioned Evan Taylor, one of their strong hitters. They have a few on this team. And he walks on four pitches. Four walks now issued by McGuire. And that's going to make a meeting at the mound happen. Between basically McGuire and the entire infield. Yep. Little cough comes in there in the end. So just try to calm McGuire down. Just find the strike zone. Yeah, Start with the first pitch. Yeah, catch your breath a little bit. Forget about what's already happened. Two walks in this inning for the two base runners. Both of them on 3-0 count state. Four pitch walks. Well, he'd love a pitcher's best friend right now. That's a ground ball for a potential double play. Depending on where it is, you could go a couple different ways, though. Middlecoff playing a bit off the base, so you have to think it's going to be your traditional second to first. Ball one. But that would mean McGuire's got to hit the strike zone first. Colin Thompson, he singled the left his first time up. Actually will get credit for one RBI because the error in left field allowed the second run to score. So he's got an RBI single. He scored Ocean City's third run of that first inning. Count evens at one ball and one strike on the foul ball. The meat of the order up now up for Ocean City. This is where McGuire needs to bear down and find a way to get the ball over the plate. Two and one the count. Well, because Matt Pashley is on deck there and you do not want to put him up with the bases loaded. Oh, that one just over the head. Good duck, <laughs> Mike. Colin Thompson, or else he would have gotten bopped. Yeah, tough spot now for McGuire. 3-1 the count. He's already walked two in the inning. One of the viewers here on Facebook Live is Wayne Hill. You might remember him from center field in the years ago, a year ago. And that's another walk. So three walks in the inning. And Ocean City has therefore loaded the bases because of it. And I uh, have to wonder if that's it for McGuire because that's Fimiani coming to the mound. Well, it might just be a conversation with his pitcher. He might try to let him get out of it. Yeah, because the first meeting was not with the manager, so this is the first manager meeting. Well, I, I think about major league where usually it's the pitching coach that comes out and then when it's the manager he takes him out but baseball a little bit different I think it usually is the manager or coach in this instant that uh, it's the mound meeting as the umpire is going to make his way and of course as soon as he gets to the mound is when the meeting breaks up yeah that umpire <laughs> I appreciate him going out there because it does just expedite there. He gets just there, too, and that's when everyone's like, wait, we got to go. I like the way that that <laughs> expedites the meeting. So McGuire in a really tough situation here. Bases loaded, one out in the inning. Walked quite that a few. That stroke to short draws, can't get it. One run scores. The runner trips over third base, so only one will score. And that may have just been a gift for Melville. So Matt Pagley helps himself out with an RBI single. And that's number 16. Ah, uh, do not have a number 16. So we do not know who the pinch runner is for Pashley, but. Yeah, here's his uh, base hit. Now that at least we can show you. Yep. And maybe we'll see what happened coming around. He just tripped over the bat. Oh, well he. Maybe he missed that. Yeah, well, up. yeah, it's because we can't see him quite there, but. That, Leaves the bases loaded, though. Gets a strike call there. So still not an ideal situation here for McGuire. Double play is still in order, but it's a force at any base now. Good job by Butcher to keep that one in front. Yeah, the breaking ball is just not working for McGuire.
One and one on the batter. There's a strike. Baldwin walked his first time up, up and scored Ocean City's last run of the first inning. Okay, good time for a strikeout to get that second out of the inning. I was say, took the words right out of my mouth. Um, not, not far enough away from Butcher. Yeah, Butcher was searching and he found it. Again, it's one of those situations where you have to commit if you're going to think about taking home. But Butcher's done a really nice job so far in keeping the ball in front of him or at least around him. Chopper is foul. Count will stay at two and two. I see Nova would love something easy like that as well because they'll be coming home first if it's anything hit close enough. Because you at least want to cut off the run from scoring. It is a force play, so all they got to do is get it to the catcher, should that be the case. Grounded to short. Flip to second, the throw to first. Double play, and they do get out of it. A big time for a double play, and it's a 6-4-3 Dazzler that really helps the cause. So one run does score for Ocean City as we take a look at the play. And that's just perfect execution right there. And plenty of time to complete the double play. You see Connor Lacey pumping, pumping the fist a little. That's a big time play for the defense. And we move to the bottom of the second. It is five to two, Ocean City. It's time for sports on the Quinn Broadcasting Network. QBC brings you local sporting events, action pack specials and play-by-play -play coverage of the area's sporting activities. From Pop Warner to college sports, Quinn Broadcasting covers it all. Join us now here on QBC for today's exciting event. So we're back for the bottom of the second inning. Pitcher Mac Pagley helped himself out in that top of the second with an RBI single. Had it not been for an unfortunate fall at first base, they might have had a second run. And we'll take a look at the Millville starting lineup as you see a couple players on deck right now. But we'll go from the top, Sergio Draz, who took part in that 6-4-3 double play, the shortstop batting. At the top, Connor Lacey, the first baseman, number four. Kevin Dick out in left field. He's had a big hit in this one, number six. Jacob Butcher behind the plate, done a good job back there, number two. Caleb Hoffman, the DH in this one. Brady Middlecoff at third. That's Garrett Shapiro, who's up to bat right now. He'll be followed by Trevor Yeager and Mario Cottrell. Chopper right back to the mound. Pagley takes his time and makes a good throw for the first out on one pitch. That's as easy as it gets for Pashley. Took his time, had an easy throw to first. Bottom of the order up for Millville, that was Shapiro, now Trevor Yeager, and Mario Cottrell. Those are the three scheduled batters for the Thunderbolts. Pashley comes to the plate inside. Good job by Yeager to stand in there because that was tantling a little bit towards him. Pashley gets the strike that time. One ball and one strike. Pashley, uh, he has the RBI single in the last inning, but he got out of a uh, bit of a trouble as the uh, Thunderbolts got their first three men on base, then he struck out the side, including that bunt third strike. That was that off-speed pitch that Pashley's had working so well. Just missed the plate. It looked pretty good from up here, but umpire calls it a 2 1 offering is slashed to the right side. That's a base hit. So Jaeger delivers a one out single. Yeah, I think Jaeger got that just off the end of the bat, but was able to push it out enough to get it through the gap there. So he stands at first base. Perfectly placed base hit. Nice stroke to the opposite field. And that'll bring up Mario Cottrell, the center fielder. Yeager takes his lead as Pashley comes to the plate and gets a strike one. 
We'll see if Noble decides to put a man in motion to try and stay out of that inning ending double play. As yeah, you're getting a couple steps off of first base. Swing and a miss, might have taken something off that pitch. That looked like a bit of a tail. Two quick strikes on Cottrell. Yeah, Movo hasn't been able to, e even if he took a little bit off, Movo hasn't been able to touch that fastball from Pashley. They've been behind it almost every swing. And that one sails outside. Good play by the catcher to make that catcher. Ryan Baldwin, the catcher for the Red Raiders, thought about possibly going to first base. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, that's where Baldwin got me off guard, as I thought he was looking for the ball. Instead, he was looking for maybe the pickoff of Jaeger. Runner is breaking pitches inside. The throw will not be in time. Jaeger has the stolen base. And nice job by Cottrell to get out of there. That was another one towards the head of a batter. So there he is at second base in scoring position, Trevor Jaeger, following his single and stolen base. Yeah, if Control can get a hold of this one, might bring Melville a little closer. Swing and a miss. Again, that heater, a little too much to handle. That is four strikeouts now. Four of the five outs that have been registered by Ashley have been by the K. And we can see exactly why, as we're gonna have a brief stoppage here. It looks like Baldwin might need a different glove. Baldwin's got a new piece of equipment here. Not sure if maybe some laces came loose or whatnot, but he's got a new glove, and Sergio Draws will step up for the second time this game. He walked his first time up and scored. Pitch is a little low for ball one. If Noble's going to be even more successful on this one, they're going to have to find a way to catch up to that fastball. Now it's tough when pashi has got the movement on his breaking ball that he does, but they can find a way to recognize. Good pitch. He fired that one on the outside part of the plate. Yeah, nothing you can do on that one. Those ones that are kind of low usually you just get off the end of the bat so you're better off just looking at it count even at one ball and one strike two outs runner at second base for the thunderbolts pitch missing two and one and again baldwin also doing a nice job back there of keeping anything in front of him Yeager has a pretty good view of if anything gets away from him, he'll be off to third. That one does bounce and Yeager does advance, no throw. Oh, and he goes right <laughs> into the glove. Wasn't exactly one of your, one of your yeah. classic slides. Goes right into the glove of Evan Taylor. Uh, any he, way you get there. He's just gonna get back up, say uh, that didn't happen and carry on. Uh, Time for a clutch hit. Let's see if Draws can deliver it. He checked. Oh, no. Wow. That looked like a check swing. Well, was it a call on the swing or call on the yeah. pitch? Yeah, he pointed okay. at the back. Okay. Yeah. Again, when I'm this short, I can't see over yeah. the. Yeah, he pointed at the back. <laughs> so it's a full count on Draws. And that one bouncing in. Good block again. And for the second time in this game, Sergio draws his aboard via a walk. Good situation here for Lacey, one of Melville's power hitters. Has a good chance to drive in at least one. Lacey does have a double on the season. It's been a tough start for him coming in just two for nine. He does have a base hit in this one already, though. But I'll tell you what, I, I would have to think Melville likes to have this man at the plate right now. Runners at first and third. He puts contact on it, looks at strike one, no throw. Draws will wind up at second base uncontested. Since he was running, he'll get credit for the steal. Yeah, for a split second, I thought Baldwin was going to throw, but with Jaeger on third, you don't want to take any chances that he's going to break for home. And yeah, this is the perfect batter up for Melville. Because if Lacey can get a hold of 
with one, usually it goes a long way. One ball and one strike. Lacey singled his first time up and scored Millville's second run. Count even at one and one. Pashley at the belt. That stroke to second, but right at the second baseman. Good play. And that'll be the third out of the inning. Lacey got a good piece of the, ba the ball, but it, fortunately it went right just slightly to the right side of Cole Larson, who makes the play. So we'll take a look at it here. Yeah, he moved to his right very nicely, but that ball was struck. Unfortunately, the fielder had the chance to get there. So that'll end the inning for the Thunderbolts. One hit, no runs, two men left. We're done with two innings of play, and it's 5-2 to two, Ocean City. Many people treat their health like a game. With Complete Care Health Network, it's easy to start your health care journey. Just select from our specialties and schedule online, by phone or on our app. Our entire team communicates with one another, so everyone works together on your total health. Plus, we make it even easier with all of these additional benefits. Level up your health with us. Complete Care Health Network. No games, just great health care for everyone. High School Baseball. It's live on Twin Broadcasting. Warm up pitches now for McGuire. Gavin McGuire, the starting pitcher for Millville. He's given up five runs, but two errors certainly helped the cause in that first inning for Ocean City when they scored four runs. And McGuire's given up five walks as well. He was definitely aided in the second inning with that inning ending double play, 6 4 3. And you have to wonder how much of a leash McGuire has out there. He's given up a lot of free passes in this one. And it's come with a lot of four straight balls in each yeah. walk. Now there he gets a strike on Travis Large. Large had the two-run single in that first inning that capped that four-run rally. That one again. Now that one might have gone to my left, but. <laughs> might have been able to hear that one hit the pole. I love, I love the fact that this very sturdy fence is in front of us. Yeah, if McGuire can find a way to settle down, Noble's done a decent job of getting hits off of Pashley. Tough uh, last inning when Lacey hit it about as hard as he could, but unfortunately right at the second baseman. But they're finding a way to get some hits off of them if they can settle down pitching-wise. Lofted into right field, and that will be caught out there. Garrett Shapiro with the catch in the first out of the inning. For the first inning, Millville gets the leadoff batter, so that's a key. Yeah, because if I... Remember correctly, McGuire has walked the leadoff batter in both the first and second inning, so he's got to feel good about not seeing anyone on first base right now. That'll bring up Cam Street. He struck out his first time up. Breaking pitch hangs a little bit high. That is the first breaking pitch, at least that I've noticed, that's at least hung up a bit in the zone. Most of his breaking pitches are in the dirt. And that one's outside. Good try to pull yeah, that one in. Butcher tried his best to maybe fool the umpire on that one, but well, it was clear enough to be outside. So it's 2-0 on the batter. And now 3-0 as that one sails high and inside. Want to make mention that we appreciate all of you who watch on the various avenues that we have our broadcast, Gwyn Broadcasting Facebook Live, Gwyn Broadcasting YouTube Live, and on channel 22 as well, for those of you who have the luxury to be at home and have a TV in front of you. Yeah, Street there thought he had a free pass to first base, but McGuire able to get one in. He's got it now. So a one out walk, sixth walk of the game, given yeah. up by McGuire. Yeah, instead of the leadoff batter, walks the second batter of the inning, but 
Again, McGuire having a really tough time at finding the strike zone on a consistent basis. So that will bring up the number eight hitter, the first baseman, Kyle Williams. He grounded out to Lacey at first base his first time up to end that four-run first inning. Looks at one up high for a ball. Want to thank all those watching on Facebook Live, including Daniel, uh, Danielle Hutchinson. Corinne Fithian is watching with us. Kelly McCauley Bryden. Ryan Butcher is here with us. Marty Cavanaugh. There's my good man from way back when. Orchestrator and organizer of the years when Millville hosted the Babe Ruth World Series. Three different times. Two, uh, two times with the 13-year-olds and the last time with the 15-year-olds. Popped up. It's in no man's land. It's going to be draws. The shortstop always has the best angle, and I'm very glad to see that Sergio Draws took a charge of that and gets the key second out. Yeah, that ball hung up there for a long time as Middlecoff, Draws, and Dick were all going for it. But yeah, as you mentioned, Draws doing a nice job of making sure his teammates are aware that he's got a beat on it. And two outs in the inning now. Runner at first base with two outs. Number nine hitter Dan Leiser, the batter, the DH. <laughs> the the umpire hitched and then decided it was a strike. Yeah, I don't. He he might have bit on Butcher's uh <laughs> on Butcher's glove there, but a good call there for McGuire. And that one is high. One and one, the count. That one almost in the same exact spot. It'd be a touch higher. McGuire in a good situation to get out of this one with just one walk. And that pitch is low, two and one the count. Lizer is first time up, walked, wound up scoring a run, the only run of the second inning. Pitch is on the way, it bounces up and outside. Three balls and one strike. This is where you want to bear down a little bit. Ah, see, I got to correct myself, and I'll mention why in a minute. Yeah, we'll keep him guessing for a minute. Oh, he gets the outside corner. So the count goes full. That means the runner will be breaking on this next pitch. Now, it says Marty Cavanaugh, but it's actually Marty, Marty Cavanaugh Jr. who's watching. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah, but back in the day, enjoy covering those Babe Ruth World Series tournaments. Full count. Two outs. Street will be taking off, although he just kind of scoots. I don't know if you knew what the count was. Yeah, I think or that, that was, there's two outs. Yeah, not that it ended up mattering on the walk, but yeah, Street maybe not aware of the situation, but it's another walk. For McGuire, he's got two outs in the inning though, so he's gonna get a chance to get out of it as back to the top of the order. Yeah, you wanna prevent any runs from scoring. They've scored in both of the first two innings. You don't wanna let them add to it. That one's popped up. Is it out of play? It looks that way as Lacey gives it a look, but it is beyond his reach. I, I was gonna die for it. My good friend Jim Parent watching. And Cindy Smith, all watching on Facebook Live. We thank you all for tuning in. <laughs> Swing and a miss. And he was well late on that pitch. Another one of those high pitches that you just can't seem to lay off of, but almost felt like it was by him before he swung. So no two count. Chance to get out of this unscathed. A little bit high. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, Larson lays off the high pitch this time. Larson officially 0 for 1. He did score a run in that first inning. A walk and a fly out to left. Swing and a miss. And he can't, but he can't go advance. anywhere He's either. Out. He's out because and the he's still base going. is occupied. He doesn't understand why he couldn't well, go anywhere. I don't know if it's different with two outs, but nonetheless. I don't think it is. He's the only one that seems confused by the situation. So a little confusion in this inning where the 3-2 count, two outs did not lead to a runner breaking from first and strikeout there by McGuire. So McGuire does get his shutout inning. 
Two walks in the inning, inning, two men left, and we're going to the bottom of the third of a 5-2 game favoring Ocean City. Life on Earth offers some challenges. Things are constantly changing. Seems like we're fighting battles all the time. But you're a warrior, a warrior for God, and he's given you the armor of God. Join Pastor Myers for this exciting series on how to be equipped to win. It begins May 5th at 11 a.m. New Life Church, Millville, New Jersey. We're back for the bottom of the third inning here on Quinn Broadcasting Facebook Live, Quinn Broadcasting YouTube Live, and welcome those who are watching on Channel 22. Millville still down by three, but they got that shutout inning that they needed to try and get back in this game here in the bottom of the third. Yeah, so this is the situation now where you, you want to try and put a few more runs up on the board after the, sh I don't know if I want to call it a shutdown inning is Guire did give up two walks, but did enough to get three outs before anybody scored. So Kevin Dick will step up to the plate. As it'll be three, four, and five in this inning for Millville. Yeah, Kevin Dick had the big hit for Millville so far in this game. That two run single, and this one is lofted to right field. Hangs up very high and very long. Makes it a very easy play for the right fielder out there. That is Travis Large for the first out of the inning. And uh, like the previous inning, one pitch, one out for Pashley. Cleanup batter is Jacob Butcher, the catcher. He struck out when he bunted the third strike foul. Looks at one down low for ball one. Now you you want to try and get Pashley to throw a little bit more. He has walked a couple in this game, but. He also has four strikeouts to his credit. Well, yeah, if anything, you want to try and see some more pitches, make him throw some more pitches, like Ocean City's doing to McGuire. 1-1 one, one offering from Pashley is right down the middle on the high side of the strike zone, but he caught the plate. I don't think Butcher agreed with that. Might have been a little high, but... Just going off the face. Uh, yeah. I don't think Butcher liked that one, but he's in a, a hole now. And that one comes inside, almost broke back across the plate. Listen, I wouldn't be surprised with the breaking ball that Pashley has if that would have come back in. So it's two and two on number two. Two-two pitch is lofted. Will it fall in? Yes, it will. He put it where nobody was going to catch it. So Jacob Butcher has a single. And so Butcher is going to go ahead and head back to the dugout to put the catcher's gear on as you take a look. Here he just drops it right outside between the second and center fielder. And we'll take a look. That's number three coming in. That's Jaden or Dol Dolan Potts. I was looking at the JV players doing the running for Butcher. Caleb Hoffman, the DH, now batting. He looked at strike three his first time up. That one's inside. Millville did rally in the first inning. They could use a rally here. They trail by three. Pot's getting a good lead over there at first. That is going to be fair down the right field line. Hustling to third base, and he's going to get there. Potts will be at third, and there's runners at the corners. That one was stroked right down the line, and Hoffman has himself a single. The ball we really had to worry about on that one was if it was going to stay fair. And a nice drive down the first baseline outside the outstretched glove of Williams over there. Well, here's that rally we're talking about. They have the two hits back to back after the first out. And Grady Middlecoff 
He struck out his first time up. The third baseman for the Thunderbolts has a chance to at least knock in one here. That one's drilled, but is it fair? It's curling foul. No, that's it, gone. It's gone. It just tucked its way inside the left field foul pole. It was just a matter of whether or not it was going to hang fair, and it does. And just like that, we have a 5-5 tie. A huge blow by Brady Middlecoff. And he gets the hero's welcome at home plate. Talk about a big swing. We'll take a look at it here. Yeah, he had the power on it. It was just a matter of if it was going to be enough. We see it just inside the foul pole there. Nice look, Ferris. <laughs> the shortstop the, didn't think the so. The shortstop but thought not. it was foul, but <laughs> that view right there showed us it stayed inside the pole. Yeah. Femiani certainly agreed that it stayed inside, and so, we've got a brand yeah. new ball game. Colin Thompson did not agree with it, but we have a new game. Strike is called there. One ball and one strike. That's the kind of hit Millwall has needed throughout the season, and now they get it. That has to make McGuire feel a lot better as well, as he did what he needed to do in the previous inning, and his teammates helped him out. It's amazing how a shutout inning can affect the game, and it definitely does in this case. Back-to-back -back singles and then a three-run homer. That curls inside. Three balls and one strike. So the situation here with three balls one strike, unless it's something you really love. And Pashley does a good job of getting it in there. So now it's anything close. Full count, three and two on the batter. Garrett Shapiro. Shapiro. Could do that all year. Thank you, because I was looking I at the going. roster and, for, and my brain couldn't find the number five. Payoff pitch coming from Pashley. That one sails outside and low, so that'll be a walk. Noble doing this all with just one out in the inning. And that's going to force a meeting on the mound. It's the first one for Ocean City, so it's just, just a situation to calm Pashley down as everybody meets on the diamond. It's a good first few innings for Pashley, but we talked about Milva was finding a way to get the bat on it, the ball, and most of their hits have come off the bat pretty hard. None harder than the last one we just saw, but they're doing a good job of getting to Pashley when they need to. So Milva has managed to tie up the game. They still have the inning going. One out, three runs across. Garrett Shapiro at first base following the one-out walk, and that'll bring up Trevor Yeager. He had a single his first time up. You just want to pass the baton, as they say, keep it going in the inning. Pitches on the outside corner for strike one. Wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot of heat from Pashley right now. Mobile hasn't been able to catch up to it, and he's got to be fired up right now. 0-1 pitch, now it's moved to first base, easily back is Shapiro. Yeah, Shapiro not really leaning towards second base. He is getting a pretty good lead, he's almost to the cutout of first base. And that one sails outside. So Shapiro definitely thinking about it. Well, you always want to be ready to run in case the ball gets away from the catcher. And he's taken probably one of the bigger leads we've seen today. 1-1 one, one pitch, tried to pull that one in again. It was off speed. It laid outside, but, you know, your catchers can be your best friends as a pitcher, too, if they can draw a call like that. 2-1 two. Two, is the count, yep. I was looking at the uh, scoreboard out there, and they had 3-1. Well, this, but the umpire said 2-1, so. It is 2-1, so. yes. There goes the runner. 
Trying to hit and run, but it's fouled off. Yeah, that was just a battle swing from Jaeger. So that one was quite a bit outside, so wonder if it was the hit and run on and not just a straight steal. But that brings this count to two and two. I almost said full count again because I looked out at the board. They go to first base. Yeah, with, with Shapiro taking off on the last one. They thought Pashley was at least going to throw over once. We'll see if Shapiro takes off again. He's getting his lead. He stays. And they call a straight three. So that is the fifth strikeout. For starting pitcher Matt Pashley. And Mario Cottrell is coming up to Barbie World. I don't know that I noticed that the first time. <laughs> whatever, whatever works for you. Right, that looked like that was pulled back in. Like the strike is called. See, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes your catcher can be your best friend. Yeah, if he's able to pull it in quick enough, it almost fools the umpire into thinking it was in a different spot. That would stroke to left. That's going to drop in for a single. Good piece of hitting by Mario Control to keep the inning alive. Barbie World works for him. He did that time. I didn't, I didn't notice it the first time as you take a look at the hit by Control here. Put a nice swing on it. Able to drive it in the outfield. Dies down just enough where the left fielder can't come in and make a diving play. And the top of the order is up with a chance to bring home the go-ahead run. Draws Ooh. looks at a strike. Yeah, if you're able to recognize that one and hold back just enough, you can do some damage on that one, but an off-speed's been pretty nasty from Pashley. Dying run, as you see right there, Garrett Shapiro looking to come home. It's popped up. It's going to be hanging up in the air. A long time and ranging under to make the catch is Travis Large. But Millville comes back all the way to even the score. They do it on four hits, including the big one, the three-run homer, following back-to-back -back singles by Jacob Busher and Caleb Hoffman. Brady Middlecoff with a three-run homer just inside the left field foul pole. And we are all tied after the bottom of the third. It's 5-5. Five to five. Life on Earth offers some challenges. Things are constantly changing. Seems like we're fighting battles all the time. But you're a warrior, a warrior for God. And he's given you the armor of God. Join Pastor Myers for this exciting series on how to be equipped to win. It begins May 5th at 11 a.m. New Life Church, Millville, New Jersey. High School Baseball. It's live on Twin Broadcasting. We're back at Mike Trout Field and a new ball game as Millville has rallied back from a 4-0 start in that top of the first inning and have come back to tie it, sending eight batters to the plate in that third inning and scoring three runs. The big blow by Brady Middlecoff, the three-run homer. And you see Brady Middlecoff right there as well as Gavin McGuire lives to see another inning. Did a nice job of shutting things down despite the two walks in the inning. He'll try to hold things where they are. Well, he got the, uh, the zero on the scoreboard in the top of the third. He'd like to get another one now that Millville has rallied to tie. So it'll be two, three, four coming up here to the heart of the order for the Red Raiders. Ball is outside. And that was a pretty decent looking off-speed pitch for McGuire, but just couldn't touch the plate. 1-0 offering is chopped foul. 
Evan Taylor reached base in the first inning on an error and has also walked. He's 0 for 1 and he did score a run in that four run rally by the Red Raiders in the first. McGuire comes to the plate. Now there was some good movement on that one. One ball and two strikes on the leadoff batter. Oh, good hold up, but we'll they're see. They're going to check, and they're going to say no swing, so yeah. it's two and two. Yeah, it looked pretty clear from here that the bat didn't go far enough. That one's down low, and the count goes full. You want to get him here if you're McGuire. Never good to put the leadoff runner on base, and we've seen that go against Melville each time. And that one's way outside. And skims some dirt, so it's a leadoff walk, and we know that leadoff walks are never good for the defensive squad. And we saw what happened in the first inning with a leadoff walk, and i got to think that's it for McGuire. Yeah, Fimiani, Dan Fimiani is coming out. We'll, we'll wait to see who's going to come in. And they're tossing a different glove to Lacey, so I have to mm -hmm. think he's coming in to pitch. And he is moving towards the mound, so Connor Lacey will take over the mound duties. We have a pitching change here at Mike Trout Field. We're tied up at five, and we'll be back in just a moment. Life on Earth offers some challenges. At Mintz Insurance, we're proud to have been serving our customers for nearly 80 years, offering 30 different insurance products for your auto, home, and business. And to help ensure that you're getting the best rates possible, we give you up to three quotes for every policy, so you can choose what's right for you. At Mintz, we're part of the community, local representatives, supporting events, and proud of it. It's part of who we are. Mintz Insurance. Call today and find out how we can help you save on insurance, or visit us at MintzInsurance.com. High School Baseball. It's live on Twin Broadcasting. So Connor Lacey getting the warm-ups in relief. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook Live. It's Quinn Broadcasting. And follow us also on Instagram, QBC. Dot TV, and you can subscribe to Quinn Broadcasting on uh, the YouTube channel, Quinn Broadcasting. You can subscribe there to Quinn Broadcasting. Again, we thank everybody for tuning in. we got a lot of people tuning in. Let's see if we can get through some of these. i got to go back to where I left off, but that's how many we have new watching the show. Wow, yep. we have tons of people watching. I saw Jim Parent, Cindy Smith. We are going to start here. Robert, Robert Reddy Jr. is with us. Ralph Fowler. Carrie Greco is watching. Luis Melendez, we might know him. He's watching the game. Rick, uh, Rick Marshall. Susan Reef Wilden. Our good friend Richard Myers is watching. Richard and Helen Myers. And, of course, uh, Richard Myers, you see all the graphics that we have coming in and out of the innings and the other sports that we have for you. Richard Myers is the man who makes all that happen. Gary Starcher is with us. So is George Woods. Lori Wilden Saparito. Donald Weber, Jr., strike called on batter. Dylan Maletta, Tanya Green. We have Sammy Lee with us. And we have a Thunder sound behind us as well as clouds have taken over the sky and I hear thunder <laughs> count is two and one now yep, so we mentioned new pitcher on the mound Connor Lacey moved from first base to the mound and Caleb Hoffman who was the DH now moves to first so if I've been told correctly as we were kind of talking that means Noble forfeits the DH, I mean, I think they're okay with that with yeah, well, Lacey being on the mound and as someone who can hit the ball, so I don't think they're too worried about that one. Foul ball evens the count at two and two. 
Evan Taylor at first base with nobody out. I must say, I didn't know that there was any potential rain in the forecast. And well, if you look at the weather app, it's saying it's currently raining right now. And uh, I think if I look out there, I do not see that, but you have to have four it is a tie game right now. So yes. any possible rain. And Runner breaking, grounded to draws. He doesn't go to second. It's probably a smart play just to get the out of first base. The runner there, Evan, Evan Taylor, had a pretty good chance of being safe had he gone to second. So 6-3 put out, runner advancing. Taylor will not get a steal credit, but he's at second base. As we take a look at it once again. He was already, yeah, he was you can see, already there, so he had a good lead and a good run towards second. So Taylor is now in scoring position. And that's Matt Pashley up to bat, but I don't think Butcher and Lacey are on the same page, so they're gonna talk about this one. Well, it's a pretty quick conversation, so must have been that far away from each other. Matt Pashley <laughs> has sacrificed and singled. He's one for one and he has an RBI single. That one coming in the second inning. Lacey looking back at second. Throws an off-speed pitch that's just off the plate. Had good movement on it, just couldn't catch enough of the strike zone. Ashley is the cleanup batter in this order for Ocean City. Count goes to 2-0. and out. The dark clouds seem to be moving pretty quickly, and there's nothing but at least white and blue behind them. Catches the corner on the outside. Nice heat there from Lacey. Two balls and one strike. That they get sets another. some movement right yes. there. Yes. The breaking pitch to the outside part of the plate effective, and it evens the count at two balls and two strikes. Yeah, it's pitches like that that fool a batter, and it did to Pashley. Popped up. It's in foul territory and drops. Nobody gets it. Yeah, Hoffman looked like he was having a hard time finding it. He was kind of looking all around and Trevor Yeager just couldn't get there in time, but it's one of those situations you hope it doesn't come back to bite you. So Pashley lives to see another pitch. And a foul tip. Strikeout number one for Lacey in the second out of the inning. And the rain is falling now. Yeah, we see some spots. I say I heard that before I even saw it. Well, with two outs, they may just try to get this last batter in here. Yeah, because it's coming down pretty heavy. Bouncing in gets away from the catcher, and that will move Taylor to third. They're going to do their best to finish this inning. Wouldn't be surprised if it continues to fall like this. We have a bit of a delay to start the bottom of the fourth, but Nova would like to do that in a tie game. But Lacey will try to bear down. That's lofted in the left field. And that's going to put Ocean City in front. A two-out single by Ryan Baldwin, and he has a little bit of atonement for himself. He's the player that hit into the inning-ending double play in the second. So he atones for that with the go-ahead single. And that's Gajewski again coming in to run. For Taylor. I will tell you that that breeze does feel really nice from that rain right now. Breaking pitch, swing and a miss. Travis Large, single two in two runs, the key hit of the first inning of a four-run rally. And Lacey took quite a bit off of that off-speed pitch. Runner breaking from first. Pitch is low and outside, and they're not going to have much of a chance to throw him out there. Stolen base for Ryan Baldwin. Yeah, Butcher 
wasn't really able to get it out quick enough, but I don't know that Jaeger was close enough to get there either. One ball and one strike on the batter. Popped up, foul, and it's not going to be anywhere near being catchable. So one ball and two strikes. So a one two count on the batter. Chance to get out of the inning without any further damage. Pitch to large is popped up the other way and foul. The rain is not heavy, but it's bothersome, I'm sure. One and two, the count on the batter. That one nicked off the catcher's helmet. I was going to say, I heard a little bit either way, but Butcher. He didn't show any effects, did yeah, he? Butcher looks to be okay. He just went and got the foul ball and back behind the plate. So, we're going to see another pitch. On its way, breaking pitches up high. Now you have to wonder how that baseball is doing right now. Got that. All right. And then I'll hold the ladder from the other side. Swing and a miss, and Connor does get out of it. Lacey with two strikeouts in the inning. But the Red Raiders make a leadoff walk pay off. A two-out single by Ryan Baldwin. One hit, one run, one left. We're heading to the bottom of the fourth, and Ocean City is in front once more, six to five. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is your hometown team for banking. We offer banking, which is small town focused and customer based. We know you, and we are for you. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is a nonprofit and federally insured. Solid as a Thunderbolt airplane, we are your team. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union, 1601 Cedar Street. Hi, I'm Bob Millard, President of Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union. Come see us and experience banking as it used to be. Many people. High School Baseball. It's live on Twin Broadcasting. are off because just tell the people we're working on fixing stuff because of the rain. Working on equipment with the rain. Three, two, one, go. All right, we're back here for the bottom of the fourth inning. And uh, we are, with the rain, of course, uh, have a little bit of an adjustment we have to make. They're here more thunder. So we're doing our best to make sure the broadcast continues the way it's going. And there you see the live shot from the press box. And until the rain stops, we're going to have that issue. So we head to the bottom of the fourth. Been a back and forth game. Uh, it's been entertaining to say the least. A four nothing lead to start for Ocean City in the first. Millville got two runs back in the bottom of the uh, first inning. Ocean City tacked on a fifth run in the second. But then Millville rallied for three runs in the bottom of the third to keep low a Brady Middlecoff three run homer just inside the left field foul pole. But Ocean City regained the lead in the top of the fourth. Lead off walk and a two out single. Lacey ripping it, but it looks like it's going to go foul. It Connor <laughs> always makes great contact. I mean, he sent that one a long way, uh, but it's not in play. It must have seemed like he was out in front of that one as Fimiani's like, we want it this way. <laughs> Pointing out towards the left field as you There's take a look inside the box. Good there. to see everybody you watching can't. on Facebook Live. This one is sinking into uh, center field, and Connor Lacey does have the leadoff single. Yeah, but as we've uh, seen from him uh, going back to last season, always seems to be able to put the ball in play rather loudly most of the time. But does a nice job of dropping that in enough where the center fielder can't come in. So he right. will, of course, as the pitcher, not be running. Yes, yeah, courtesy runner for pitchers and catchers in high school, so that number is, 22. That is Cole Mulherin. If you remember the name Mulherin, Caden Mulherin. 
graduating last year. That is his younger brother. Kevin Dick rips it to center field. It's going back, going back. It's gone! Another big time home run, Thunderbolt style. And just like that, the Bolts have their first lead of the game. Kevin Dick got all of that one, and you could hear it off the bat. Oh. As you might be able to hear what Kevin Dick just said. Uh, we we we'll just we just We heard it. With the, you might have heard it, but. Oh, that we'll was just, a blow. We'll just say that Kevin Dick is very excited about his home run. Four RBIs in the game. That two-run homer, as well as the two-run single in the first inning. And, and that, that was tattooed. And that's going to send Matt Pashley out of the game. Actually, was Matt Pashley still pitching? Because a different player just came off the mound. I don't know that Pashley was still pitching, but nonetheless, we still do have a new pitcher. It looked like number 35 just came off the mound. And if I can find a number 35, that was Kyle Williams, but I don't know that he was just pitching. But he was well, no, first Pashley base. is going back out, so. Well, regardless, we have a new pitcher. That's number 34, Nolan Bouchard. So I think Pashley's just going to first now. Is I believe what's happening. Again, we don't get those changes up here in the booth. We just we have also to weren't use paying our eyes. Attention. Well, I think you're right. I think they uh, Ashley started the inning. The home run happened, and they're just making. And he's the just change. going to first. Now. Right. What got me was Williams running across, as it looked like they were breaking up on the mound. So a new pitcher in for Ocean City, and a good job by Millville to chase Ashley from this game because up in. You don't want to say he was dealing, because Millville's done a good job, but he was dealing via the strikeout. He'd gotten Millville on a couple strikeouts, had the fastball working well, but they will get into the Red Raiders' bullpen now again. That's number 34, Nolan Bouchard, who will take the mound for Millville, and we'll take a look if I can get at what he's done this season. He's only pitched one inning, but he has one strikeout, so not a bad ratio for him. Hasn't given up anything, but again, he's only thrown 13 pitches so far this season. So the Thunderbolts finally have the lead. They've been battling to come back throughout this game, and they now have that lead at 7-6. With no outs in the inning, you want to keep it going. And that's a nice stroke off the bat of Butcher. And it's going to fall in front of the left fielder for a base hit. So Millville finally getting the, the offense cranked up this season. Yeah, it's been a tough go for them this year, but coming off a no-hitter, they've certainly got a lot of hits in this one and a lot of loud hits as, again, Butcher will go ahead and take a seat and get the gear on and running for him again, Dolan Potts. As Hoffman steps up to the plate, he went from the DH to first base in the pitching change. He's one for two with a single and a run scored. Lays off the pitch for ball one. If this was going to be important for Melville was to get into that bullpen if they could. Did a nice job chasing Pashley from the game with two home runs. A big one off the bat of Kevin Dick now. Ball is outside, gets away. A late start to second. But again, with the way that the ball bounced to the left side, it allowed the uh, runner to advance. It's also padding back there, so it's not really, it kind of dies back there. So runner in scoring position. You see him right there taking his lead off of second base. 2-0 pitch coming. Down low, 3-0. Bouchard have a little trouble in this at bat. As the rain has appeared to settle down. So you don't have to swing here. Look at one. And he does draw the walk on four pitches. So Caleb Hoffman on for the second time. And that's going to send up Brady Middlecoff. He had the first big blast of this game for Millwall that tied the game. 
He's got two runners on right now. Like to drive in at least one of them if he can. First pitch to him is inside. Yeah, but right now if you're Millville, that's four straight balls from Bouchard, so no need to swing the bat unless you have to. Brady Middlecoff, of course, has a big blow in this game, a three-run homer. Swing and a miss. Yeah, I think he was trying to get one right there. So Millville the chance to get a few more here. Nobody out in the inning and runners at second and third. I'm sorry, first and second. Yeah, you want to find a way to add on if you can because this. Nice bunt. Only one play, and that's going to be the first base. So a good sacrifice bunt by Middlecoff. That'll place two runners in scoring position. Yep, and that brings up Garrett Shapiro. Looking for his first hit of the game. He did walk in his last plate appearance, grounded out in his first one. So with runners on second and third, he'd like to put something to the outfield and potentially score a pair. Again, Millville with their first lead of the game, but with the way this Red Raiders team is hitting. Chopper towards short, short. Cut off there. The throw is, gets away from the first baseman. That'll score one. The runners had to hold because it was a nice defensive play at shortstop but then the throw uh, not quite where it had to be the pinch runner score who was yeah the pinch that was runner? dolan potts dolan potts who kind of had to hesitate a little bit on the play and kind of stumbled his way to home once he realized the ball got away i don't know if at first he was thinking about not going but ends up scoring big run for millville on the error and what you like about that, if you're the Thunderbolts, you have second and third again because of the error. Ball on Trevor Yeager. And Milvo doing a good job of recognizing that Bouchard isn't hitting the plate. So again, unless you see something you really like, you don't necessarily have to swing. 1-0 pitch, grounded up the middle. It gets through. That might score two. One run across, the throw to the plate is cut off. A two-run single by Trevor Yeager. And Millville has its best offensive outing of the year so far. It's 10-6. to six. Yeah, this has been a huge, so far, bounce-back game for Millville. And they've still only got one out in the inning. As Mario Cottrell will come to the plate now. And it's the little things we're going to make mention of Brady Middlecoff's sacrifice fly to set it up and two-run score because of that single up the middle. Yeah, Millville playing a little bit of small ball. Now they've been aided by an error in this inning, and unfortunately the shortstop wasn't able to stay in front of that one on the last play that drove in a couple runs. But Millville taking advantage when they can, and when you got a Red Raiders team that's shown they can put up runs of their own, you want to... Get as big of a lead as you can. Swing and a miss. One ball and one strike. Yeah, this is what you were hoping to see from Millville at some point this season. It's been tough going for them to start. But this is the kind of outing they were hoping for. Popped up on the infield. Third baseman is going to take charge of that, the third baseman is Evan Taylor. That's the second out. That does turn the lineup over for Draz as Femiani's going to take him aside and give him a little bit of strategy here. Two outs in the inning, but Millville's pushed across quite a few runs in this inning. Five runs. I thought that was what it was. I was trying to do the quick math, but as I've noted on these broadcasts many times, I do not have that ability. <laughs> Ball one, uh, Sergio draws. I knew you were going to be quicker at giving it to me, so I was like, I'm just going to wait till he puts up enough fingers for me to know how many <laughs> runs. I thought that was right, but I doesn't. No, he said he says it hits his elbow, uh, but the umpire the, has to be the one to determine <laughs> that, and he says no. Yeah, draws pointed to the elbow, was trying to almost will the umpire, and then the umpire was just kind of like, no, you're going to stay in the box. Is 2-0, though for draws. That one catches the 
coming in in relief of Pashley. And that's a nice break from Lacey. Looked like it might. Well, batter helps him out there. That was well inside, and it's 0-2. Uh, this would be a good inning to uh, get the 1-2-3 uh, because you have the 7-8-9 and nine batters up for Ocean City. Yeah, it's a good time for another shutdown inning if you're Lacey. Mm -hmm. One and two the count. Lacey's next offering is launched to center field. Once again, right there to make the catch is Cottrell. So that's two outs. Both fly balls to center field. Bouchard did what he could, waited back on that off-speed pitch from Lacey and got almost enough, just didn't get quite what he needed to get that one over. So two quick outs of a holding that 10-6 lead. Oh, nice curveball. I'll tell you, Lacey's breaking ball is really working today. Lizer has walked both times he's been up. But Butcher tried. Again, you give the catchers credit when they try to frame those pitches. I don't know what else to say. Uh, one and two is yeah, again. That's yeah. what you said. Well, just in terms of the break he's got on that <laughs> ball. That was like the first, the one and the last at bat, too. Lacey tries to get this, but he walked off the mound thinking that's strike three. But you have to hope Ocean City doesn't see that as, a, oh, you thought that was a strike? Well, let's see what happens now. Two outs, nobody on base. Popped up. Well, that's out of play yeah. in foul territory to the right. Well, the count remains two and two. Wonder if Lacey thinks about going back to that off speed pitch. It's gotten him a few strikes in this inning. Chopper into the uh, yes. open spot. They'll have to hurry yeah. and they're not going to get him. That was going to be a tough play either way. That one kind of went to a spot that nobody was in. So a good piece of hitting there from the leadoff man, Larson. Number nine hitter. Or number nine hitter. So I thought I saw number four. Oh, I'm looking again. I have a problem looking at the number, as the, as the position as the number. That's easy to do. It's easy to, this line so, of cards that we have shows position and number, and they're kind of like you really have they, to look at They're both out. numbers, yeah. Yeah. Which takes my brain a whole lot to figure out sometimes. So a two-out infield single keeps the inning alive, and now a wild pitch will move Lizer up to second base. Yeah, with two outs in the inning, Lacey's just got to worry about now, Larson. Larson has walked and flied out to left and struck out. 0 for 2, and he scored the first run of the game. Pitch launched into center field. Pretty well hit, but it's going to be in play. And the center fielder gets all three outs of the inning. Mario Cottrell, uh, Cottrell rather, seeing the ball three times and making all three plays. Just the infield single is all that happened right there. As we take a look at the uh, batter that just launched that to center field. And Cottrell... Tracked it down, as you will see momentarily, just easily moseying on over to his right, making the catch. So three center field outs sandwiched around an infield single. And, of course, uh, that's a good inning for uh, Connor Lacey to keep those zeros intact. That's back to, well, not back to back, I'm sorry. Uh, two innings now where they've got no runs, Ocean City. They've scored in the other three. Yep, and it's a good job by Lacey coming in, settling things down for Melville. Done a good job on the mound so far in relief of McGuire, who had a tough outing. Had a bit of trouble finding the strike zone, gave up uh, way more walks than he'll tell you he'd like to give up. Of course, pitcher would like to give up none. But Lacey doing his part on the mound, that's for sure. Well, you come in and you settle things down. Your offense came alive in the last two innings, and you want your pitcher, the relief pitcher in particular, to get outs, and that's what he's done. So we head to the bottom of the inning. 
Bottom of the fifth, Millville ahead, 10 to 6. It'll be Kevin Dick, Jake, uh, Jacob Butcher, and Caleb Hoffman. The first three batters, it's three, four, and five for the Thunderbolts. And Kevin Dick's had a good day at the plate. I think he's happy to be making up for that error in the first inning. He's had one of two home runs for Millville today. Looks at ball one. Dick has doubled, homered. He's two for three with four RBIs. Oh, but he just, yeah, he just chased one well out of the zone and he's definitely not happy with himself. 1-1 one, one offering on the way, missing the plate. That one's outside. Three balls and one strike. Leadoff batter Kevin Dick looking to get on base. Relief pitcher right there, Nolan Bouchard. Chopper to third. Nice grab. The throw across the diamond will be in time. A high chopper handled nicely by Evan Taylor to get across the first base for the first out. That will bring up Jacob Butcher. He's got two hits and three at-bats. As well, He had a pinch runner both times, so the pinch runner scored those runs. But two runs have scored in that spot in the batting order. Hey, all Butcher has to do is get on base, and it seems like it's working out well. One zero pitch popped up on the infield. I can I can't see First it. First baseman is going to range under it and make the catch. <laughs> that I is. Uh, Not Kyle Williams, it's the starting pitcher. That's what yeah, it's Pat, Pashley Matt now. Pashley, he yeah. had moved over to first base. That's why he hesitated. Tell you, I lost that one off the bat, but Pashley sure didn't. As we are now back to a pretty much blue sky. Not really many clouds in the area at all, so that rain didn't hold for very long. Pitch is high for ball one. Tell you what, it did cool things down considerably. Strike is called. And Caleb Hoffman will look to keep the inning alive. And that's an infield pop up. Third baseman's calling for it. And Evan Taylor puts it away. So it's a 1 2 3 inning for the Thunderbolts. We head to the top of the sixth inning. Millville enjoying a 10 to 6 lead. Many people treat their health like a game. With Complete Care Health Network, it's easy to start your health care journey. Just select from our specialties and schedule online by phone or on our app. Our entire team communicates with one another, so everyone works together on your total health. Plus, we make it even easier with all of these additional benefits. Level up your health with us. Complete Care Health Network. No gains, just great health care for everyone. High School Baseball. It's live on Twin Broadcasting. Back here at Mike Trout Field, Millville High School. The Thunderbolts lead the Red Raiders 10 to 6 at the moment. Connor Lacey working his third inning on the mound in relief of starter Gavin McGuire. And Lacey's done a pretty good job in relief, allowing Millville to get things going offensively. Lacey has had himself a decent day at the plate. He's gotten, I'll say, robbed a couple times by some nice plays by the second baseman, but 
he's doing his part where it matters, and that's on the mound right now. Yeah, the only offense that Ocean City has produced against Connor Lacey is two singles. Now, the first single he allowed did score Evan Taylor, but that run was credited to Matt, I'm sorry, not to Matt Pashley, to uh, Gavin McGuire, who left after he walked uh, Taylor. Taylor is leading off, Evan Taylor. He's walked twice and reached base on an error. And he's got a 2-0 count to start with. Two, three, and four hitters. So key batters coming up for the Red Raiders. A healthy hack and a foul tip. Lacey is usually pretty ready to go up on the mound there. Gets the ball back and is already in the windup. Grounded towards second. Should be a routine play and is. No, Kaufman drops it. I don't know what happened there, but that's going to be an error on the first baseman. Yeah. That's Caleb Hoffman at first base now. And that was, she said, about as routine of a play as you can get, but we'll see what happens here. Jaeger makes a nice pick up. The throw. throw is right there. He turns his glove, it looks like. Yeah. He just turns the glove as it's coming in. and well, He can't afford to give out away to a team like Ocean City. Yeah, four-run lead right now for Millville, but Ocean City has shown that they can put runs up on the board in bunches. Thompson fouls that one off. One ball and one strike. Yeah, four runs is nothing to Ocean City considering they started off this game with a 4 nothing lead, so you want to get the outs when you can. Ooh. It just called high, two and one. Thompson singled his first time up, walked, and grounded out to short. He scored a run in that four-run first. And he's outside, and it's three and one. This is the situation that Melville's found themselves in a couple times in this game is putting runners on base, especially with no outs in the inning. Breaking pitch. That's going to find right field. Single, and the runner moves up. To the next base. So Taylor will wind up at second. And that is the second hit of the day for Colin Thompson. And that almost seemed like Lacey was just trying to get it over the plate. But took way too much off of that and made that one an easy one. So Matt Pashley now approaches the plate. He's one for two with an RBI. Pitch missing. This is where Millbrook again got into trouble earlier. You've got some room to work with, but you don't want to give Ocean City an inch. Leonard's taking their leads off first and second. Cottrell backtracking makes the catch. No advance by the runners. So that's a key out. And it looks like Control might be dealing with the sun just a touch. It does appear to be peeking out there. But yeah, I think have, it's more Kevin Dick that's dealing with it than Cottrell. We do have the sun back. Cottrell doing a good job of just setting it up and making the catch. And a nice recovery, too, because Cottrell does initially take the step in. Not enough to hurt anything, but... Ryan Baldwin, the batter, looks at strike one. He's walked, singled, and a hit into that key second inning double play. So he's one for two. Popped up a very high fly ball. Right fielder makes the catch. That's the, what you want to do. Take charge as the outfielder and make the play. So Garrett Shapiro, a Shapiro gets that. I'm going to say Shapiro <laughs> for the rest of my life. But that breaks up four consecutive outs to Mario Cottrell in center field. Again, a nice job by Connor to induce the fly ball. And good on Shapiro calling off Jaeger. And two outs in the inning. A big chance here for Lacey to get out of it. Travis Large, one for three on the day with a two-run single that capped off the four-run first inning for the Red Raiders. Pitch is high for ball. Evan Taylor at second base. 
Colin Thompson at first. Two outs in the inning. Ripped, but that's going to be foul by plenty. And Lacey trying to go back to the heater as the Red Raiders have gotten a hold of his off-speed pitch. Luckily, the last two have been pop-outs, but I think we just need an extra baseball. Oh, they just want it off the field. Well, Kevin Dick's going to go ahead and take care of that one. Get a little break in the action. He'll get that one in. And we will resume play. One ball, one strike. One large. Lacey is ready with the 1-1 one, one offering. Almost, mm. almost offered at that one. Yeah, that was close. Check swing is ruled by the base umpire. So it's two and one. That one bounces up, runners breaking, and no throw. Good job by Butcher to just eat that one. But it moves the runners that much closer. Puts two in scoring position now. So anything hits the outfield scores, likely scores two, but Lacey's going to try and keep it in. As something's going on with Colin Thompson. He's waving off the trainer. But I don't know if he stepped on the base maybe or what happened. But he's flexing out that left foot. But he's going to stay in for now. Yeah, I didn't catch if he just landed awkwardly. We'll keep an eye on that, though, if anything goes out to the outfield. And see if maybe he's not able to get home, but hopefully Melville doesn't have to worry about that. Next pitch on the way, and that's going to be ball four. The bases are now loaded. It does put the force out at any base, but this is one of Ocean City's top hitters, Cam Street. Coming up to the plate. They've limited a bit him quite a bit today, though. He actually doesn't have a hit. He's, he's got one walk. So he is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. That one's going to be out of play. Well, Lacey's going to have to bear down on street because he could blow this game open. Strike is called. That must have just caught the plate. And just like that, two quick strikes for Lacey, and he's ready to throw a third. And he does get back-to-back -back strike calls to end the rally. And that error doesn't come back to hurt the Thunderbolts. The leadoff error, the single followed, and then two fly balls. The walk was given to large, but Kim Street, uh, Cam Street looks at strike three. So the inning is over. Bases left loaded by the Red Raiders, and we head to the bottom of the sixth inning. It's 10-6 Thunderbolts. Life on Earth offers some challenges. Things are constantly changing. Seems like we're fighting battles all the time. But you're a warrior, a warrior for God, and he's given you the armor of God. Join Pastor Myers for this exciting series on how to be equipped to win. It begins May 5th at 11 a.m. New Life Church, Millville, New Jersey. High School Baseball. It's live on Twin Broadcasting. Well, hopefully the Thunderbolts will put the uh, bat on the ball a few more times. They lead by four, but again, you never have enough runs when you're playing against a team that can put runs on the board like Ocean City. And Lacey getting himself out of a huge jam there. Base is loaded, and Ocean City does not scratch a run across. Look, when we get to the end of this game, we'll have to look back and see if that's a pivotal point in this game as Ocean City will have... 
at least one more chance after this. But Nova hopes they can put up a few more runs and make it a little harder on them. And one of the men who's done it for Nova, Brady Middlecoff, may only have one hit officially on the day. That was a three-run home run, and that was the big one for Nova. Yeah, that three-run homer tied the game at five. Ocean City then took a lead in the bottom of the top of the fourth, but then Millville scored five. Oh, I thought Middle Cost one was the one that gave him the lead. No, he tied the game with that blow. Shows what I remember. Five to five after the third <laughs> inning. Two quick strikes. O2 pitch, swing and a miss. Well, Bouchard does quick work of Middlecoff there. Well, what uh, Ocean City is hoping for one, two, three innings so they can bring their bats up. And they'll have eight, nine, and one when they come to bat in the seventh. So an ideal part of the lineup Coming up for the Red Raiders from Millville. 1-0 pitch, swing and a miss, and that was some high heat. Now, Millville hasn't been able to lay off that high heat today. It's at least the third or fourth Millville batter that swung at it. Shapiro officially one for two, a single and a run scored. He's also walked, and he's now in a 1-2 hole. Up the middle, that's gonna go through. Garrett Shapiro with his second hit of the game. That's a good job of waiting back on that pitch. It was the off speed from Bouchard and see here Shapiro does, Shapiro, see I'll do it too. Does a nice job just letting that one get in and driving that to the outfield to keep bats moving. That'll bring up Trevor Yeager. He's got two hits on the day, two for three. That one's outside, ball one. Jaeger also has a stolen base in the game. Shapiro getting himself a good lead, gets back in time there on the pickoff attempt. Yeah, Jaeger's second hit drove in two runs during that five run rally in the fourth. Up the middle, takes a hop off the mound. Stepping on the bag, that's a sweet double play turn right there for the shortstop. Colin Thompson took it into his own hands and makes the six unassisted three double play. We've reached the end of six innings. It is 10 to six. Millville leads Ocean City just three outs away from their first one of the year. At Mintz Insurance, we're proud to have been serving our customers for nearly 80 years, offering 30 different insurance products for your auto, home, and business. And to help ensure that you're getting the best rates possible, we give you up to three quotes for every policy, so you can choose what's right for you. At Mintz, we're part of the community, local representatives, supporting events, and proud of it. It's part of who we are. Mintz Insurance. Call today and find out how we can help you save on insurance, or visit us at mintzinsurance.com. High School Baseball. It's live on Twin Broadcasting. Connor Lacey looking to get the three outs here in the top of the seventh that will make Millville a winner for the first time in the regular season. These two teams, as Ariel mentioned at the start, Starting the year in opposite directions, 3-0 for Ocean City, 0-3 for Millville. But Millville would not mind, not mind getting that first win against an undefeated team. And I have to love the uh, soundtrack that was being played there, Sinatra singing my way when the first line of the song is, the end is near. So hopefully that is true. And Connor Lacey will get the three outs that will make it happen with, along with his defense. 
She at Ocean City put the ball in play. And that's Bouchard. Nolan Bouchard. Oh, he just chased a high one too. Lacey with two quick strikes. I just love that Lacey's always ready. He gets the ball back, he's back on the mound, he's already ready to throw the pitch. And, oof, that didn't miss by much. But he doesn't take any time, he waits for the batter to get back in, and he's ready to throw the next pitch. That one's fouled off to the right side. Oops. Count stays one and two. We're living to see another pitch as Bouchard as he just got the bat out enough on that one. First out of this inning would be a big one. Breaking pitch, that's going to be a tough play. The throw is in time. Oh, and a good pick over there by Hoffman makes up for that error he had earlier. See, so Bouchard is the first out of the inning. Give Brady Middlecoff a, a good uh, play there to make that happen. I Chased guess. it down in a hurry and got the ball over to first base. Yeah. I guess it was more of a bounce than a pick, but still a good job by Hoffman to get the out. Dan Leiser, the number nine hitter, but he's been on base all three times, two walks and a single. <laughs> Strike is called. Two balls and one strike on Lizer. Up the middle. That's going to get through. So Lizer has reached base all four times. That is his second hit of the game. At the top of the order now up. I could be wrong. One of the. I know it's not the first hit Lacey's given up but he hasn't given up much. Get the second, fourth, wow, okay. Just kidding. Sales outside. Pretend I know what I'm talking about. And he's given up four hits. Getting a good lead over there on first. Well, down by four runs, I don't know that you want to be sending anybody right now. Yeah, you gotta be really sure. But he's taking three long steps off yep. of first base. He's beyond the cutout, practically. And the batter is oh, hit. Yeah. yeah, he had no chance to get out of the way of that one. Well, not the situation you want to be in, as Femiani's gonna come out and talk to Lacey. He has pitched well in his innings of relief here. You want to see him finish this one, finish this one off. And still have the four run lead. You just want to get the second out somehow and then focus on finishing it off on the uh, next batter. Be even better if you can get the double play. They have one today. Both teams with a double play on the day. Going to have to do that with Evan Taylor up to bat as Ocean City's getting into that meat of the order now. Yeah, Evan Taylor has also been on base four, four times, twice on errors, the other two times on walks. Foul straight back. Always good to get the first strike. And I think he may have gotten a gift from Taylor there too, chasing that one. He'll take strikes any way you can get him. Lacey ready. Missing. The runners will move up the base as the ball gets away. Well, that takes the double play away. Butcher couldn't hang on to that one, so two runners in scoring position now. we got to keep this one in the infield if we can. City's come alive on the bench over there. Yeah. 
Two and one to count on Taylor. Swings through that one. I think he took a little bit off that pitch. Lacey getting him to chase one. Going for the big swing here. You want to get the out here if you can. You do not want to bring up the tying run with the bases loaded. That one sails high. And the count goes full. And Lacey couldn't get enough break on that one. So this is an important pitch. Actually, is that ball four? He's, full no, the, yeah, that's a full, full count. count. It's a full count. Yeah, three, two. Well, no, he's... Well, he's... Ta he's Taylor's going to go to first, but I'm pretty sure that's full count. That's what, that's what I have. That's, now they... Uh, yeah, they're going to call him back. That. Yeah, they call him back. So it's still a 3-2 count. So an important pitch here for Lacey. Runners on second and third, a four-run lead. Putting this runner on brings the tying run to the plate. This Taylor's going to need a little bit more time to put his equipment back on. Why would you love a strikeout after that? Let's see if Connor Lacey can get that. Grounded in the hole. Good pick, Draws gets it across, but not in time. And the ball gets away and that'll allow a second run. I, I gotta be honest, I think Draws has gotta hit that. I think you gotta eat it in that situation. That was deep in the hole. Now the tying run is up to bat. Still just one out in the inning. She's sitting hanging in. And that's in the hole to right field. That'll move up the runner to second. The tying run now. Actually, it's not the tying run at second. It's the tying runs are on base. It's never easy. It is never easy. I mean, this is why Ocean City's 3-0 on the season. That was the third hit for Colin Thompson on the game. And Matt Pashley up to bat. He's the go-ahead run. That one's fouled off to the right. Uh, to, yeah, to the right. Ten to eight to score. Two runs in the inning for Ocean City. Up the middle, that will probably score another run. The throw to the plate. He's not there. It's cut off. The ball gets away. We have a 10 to 9 game. Ocean City has a ton of life right now. So Matt Lashley with a key hit there, an RBI single, his second of the game. Second RBI of the game. And so Three straight hits for Ocean City. Again, Jackson Gayeski coming to run. <laughs> there it is. Glad to have you aboard, Michael. Thank you very much for the compliment. Appreciate it. The man who surprised me on my birthday. <laughs> I think the pitch missed, so it's 1-0. Yeah. I was just a little confused that Pashley was still able to be run for when he's not the pitcher anymore. Do they have a pinch runner in? Yes. Uh, he committed. Yep. Yeah, that is a correct call. Gayeski came in to run. Pashley's now at first, so... Well, he's now the third baseman. I'm oh, sorry, first baseman. Yeah, so I didn't, so well, you don't, regardless, you can pinch run for him. One ball and one strike. One out. Three runs across for Ocean City. The tying run at second base. Oh, he flinched, and the call is a strike. So Baldwin wanted to try to go get it. Yeah, that's, that's the off-speed pitch that Lacey's gotten to work. I don't know if you want to go to it again, though. Two and two. Ocean City has played it three runs. The tying run is at second base at the moment. 
he swung. No question about it, he strikes out. I think he swung badly at two pitches. That could not be any bigger of a second out. Fourth strikeout. Yep. Fourth. Oh yeah, he was, his bat was all the way past the batter's box, so. Yep, yep. it's the right call. Strike one on the foul ball, Travis Large at the plate. Ten to eight. Oh, sorry, ten to nine, Noble. Wish it was only clinging eight. to that one run lead. Oh, that one. I don't know how that bottom. misses them. I do not know how that just missed Large. Large is one for three with two RBIs. This he's got to calm down. Yeah, he's going to take a moment to think about it. And this has been a tough inning for him. Ocean City's put some good uh, swing on the ball to make this a one-run game. Two and one the count. They see right back with the two-one offering. Swing and a miss. And Millwall is just one strike away from a win. And I don't know what. That's Jaws. I'm not sure what our discussion here is with yeah. the first base coach. Yeah, I'm I not sure. He's not liking the calls, maybe? I'm not sure. Oh, he swung at sure. that one, didn't he? Did he not swing at I, I don't think he swung at it. I just, I'm not sure what the first base coach is upset with. I guess if he's going to be upset, maybe there was a pitch inside that got called a strike, but. All right, 2-2 two, two offering. He shakes off the first, but he likes the second. Popped up, but it's out of play. Large so we'll do it all another, over again. Large looking to see another pitch. He pumped up as he gets a large out to end the game. In relief, five strikeouts for Connor Lacey, and he is the winning pitcher as Millville puts a number under that W column that's not a zero. A 10 to 9 victory as we look at the final strike. And he definitely helped him out on that. Watch one. the arm pumps. He yeah, does it about three times. He, oh, well. <laughs> Four times. I don't blame him. That, that was a tough inning. Ocean City show and they won't go away without a fight and they sure put up one in that seventh inning and how big does that five inning uh, five run inning loom now and Ocean City leaving the bases loaded. That's right. Yeah, Millville uh, they had the five run rally in the fourth inning that got them in front. It was uh, Brady Middlecoff who had the three run homer to tie the game but Kevin Dick was uh, the man who put Millville ahead with the uh, two-run homer had four RBIs in the game. So the Millville Thunderbolts really put it together against uh, one of the better teams in the league. Ocean City came in with a 3-0 record, and they are now uh, on the losing end of their first loss of the season. They line up to talk things over. But Millville, with a very gutty performance end-to-end, -end, they were down 4 nothing in this one and come back to win it 10-9. We'll catch our breath just a minute. We'll just watch the uh, two teams, of course, that do the post-game ceremony thing that they do. They're going to talk to each other, and we're going to try to get a uh, player of the game up. We'll see if we can't get one. My choice would be uh, Kevin uh, Dick, myself. I was going to say, do we be going with Kevin Dick? I, I, I think so, because he, uh, had Brady, uh, Brady Middlecoff had the big blow to tie the game, a three-run homer that ducked inside that left field foul pole. I wasn't sure it was fair or foul. Yeah, that, that's the one that distance. barely stayed in. But, yeah, Kevin Dick also coming through in the clutch for Millville as you take a look at them. So the, Got to feel good about this one now. The Thunderbolts finally get a win on the column. One and three on the season now as Coach Dimiani and the staff talk things over. We'll take a timeout here and see if we can't get our star of the game up in the press box. Our final score, Millville defeats Ocean City 10-9. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is your hometown team for banking. We offer banking which is small town focused and customer based. We know you and we are for you. 
Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is a nonprofit and federally insured. Solid as a Thunderbolt airplane, we are your team. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union, 1601 Cedar Street. Hi, I'm Bob Millard, President of Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union. Come see us and experience banking as it used to be. Many people treat their health like a game. With Complete Care Health Network, it's easy to start your health care journey. Just select from our specialties and schedule online, by phone or on our app. Our entire team communicates with one another, so everyone works together on your total health. Plus, we make it even easier with all of these additional benefits. Level up your health with us. Complete Care Health Network. No gains, just great health care for everyone. Life on Earth offers some challenges. Things are constantly changing. Seems like we're fighting battles all the time. But you're a warrior, a warrior for God. And he's given you the armor of God. Join Pastor Myers for this exciting series on how to be equipped to win. It begins May 5th at 11 a.m. New Life Church, Millville, New Jersey. At Mintz Insurance, we're proud to have been serving our customers for nearly 80 years, offering 30 different insurance products for your auto, home, and business. And to help ensure that you're getting the best rates possible, we give you up to three quotes for every policy, so you can choose what's right for you. At Mintz, we're part of the community, local representatives, supporting events, and proud of it. It's part of who we are. Mintz Insurance. Call today and find out how we can help you save on insurance, or visit us at mintzinsurance.com. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is your hometown team for banking. We offer banking which is small town focused and customer based. We know you and we are for you. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is a nonprofit and federally insured. Solid as a Thunderbolt airplane, we are your team. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union, 1601 Cedar Street. Hi, I'm Bob Millard, President of Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union. Come see us and experience banking as it used to be. Many people treat their health like a game. With Complete Care Health Network, it's easy to start your health care journey. Just select from our specialties and schedule online, by phone or on our app. Our entire team communicates with one another, so everyone works together on your total health. Plus, we make it even easier with all of these additional benefits. Level up your health with us. Complete Care Health Network. No gains, just great health care for everyone. Life on Earth offers some challenges. Things are constantly changing. Seems like we're fighting battles all the time. But you're a warrior, a warrior for God. And he's given you the armor of God. Join Pastor Myers for this exciting series on how to be equipped to win. It begins May 5th at 11 a.m. New Life Church, Millville, New Jersey. At Mintz Insurance, we're proud to have been serving our customers for nearly 80 years, offering 30 different insurance products for your auto, home, and business. And to help ensure that you're getting the best rates possible, we give you up to three quotes for every policy, so you can choose what's right for you. At Mintz, we're part of the community, local representatives, supporting events, and proud of it. It's part of who we are. Mintz Insurance, call today and find out how we can help you save on insurance, or visit us at mintzinsurance.com. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is your hometown team for banking. We offer banking which is small town focused and customer based. We know you and we are for you. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is a nonprofit and federally insured. Solid as a Thunderbolt airplane, we are your team. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union, 1601 Cedar Street. Hi, I'm Bob Millard, President of Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union. Come see us and experience banking as it used to be. Many people treat their health like a game. With Complete Care Health Network, it's easy to start your health care journey. Just select from our specialties and schedule online, by phone or on our app. Our entire team communicates with one another, so everyone works together on your total health. Plus, we make it even easier with all of these additional benefits. Level up your health with us. Complete Care Health Network. No gains, just great health care for everyone. Life on Earth offers some challenges. Things are constantly changing. Seems like we're fighting battles all the time. 
But you're a warrior, a warrior for God, and he's given you the armor of God. Join Pastor Myers for this exciting series on how to be equipped to win. It begins May 5th at 11 a.m. New Life Church, Millville, New Jersey. At Mintz Insurance, we're proud to have been serving our customers for nearly 80 years, offering 30 different insurance products for your auto, home, and business. And to help ensure that you're getting the best rates possible, we give you up to three quotes for every policy, so you can choose what's right for you. At Mintz, we're part of the community, local representatives, supporting events, and proud of it. It's part of who we are. Mintz Insurance. Call today and find out how we can help you save on insurance, or visit us at mintzinsurance.com. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is your hometown team for banking. We offer banking which is small town focused and customer based. We know you and we are for you. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is a nonprofit and federally insured. Solid as a Thunderbolt airplane, we are your team. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union, 1601 Cedar Street. Hi, I'm Bob Millard, President of Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union. Come see us and experience banking as it used to be. Many people treat their health like a game. With Complete Care Health Network, it's easy to start your health care journey. Just select from our specialties and schedule online, by phone or on our app. Our entire team communicates with one another, so everyone works together on your total health. Plus, we make it even easier with all of these additional benefits. Level up your health with us. Complete Care Health Network. No games, just great health care for everyone. Life on Earth offers some challenges. Things are constantly changing. Seems like we're fighting battles all the time. But you're a warrior, a warrior for God. And he's given you the armor of God. Join Pastor Myers for this exciting series on how to be equipped to win. It begins May 5th at 11 a.m. New Life Church, Millville, New Jersey. At Mintz Insurance, we're proud to have been serving our customers for nearly 80 years, offering 30 different insurance products for your auto, home, and business. And to help ensure that you're getting the best rates possible, we give you up to three quotes for every policy, so you can choose what's right for you. At Mintz, we're part of the community, local representatives, supporting events, and proud of it. It's part of who we are. Mintz Insurance. Call today and find out how we can help you save on insurance, or visit us at mintzinsurance.com. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is your hometown team for banking. We offer banking which is small town focused and customer based. We know you and we are for you. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is a nonprofit and federally insured. Solid as a Thunderbolt airplane, we are your team. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union, 1601 Cedar Street. Hi, I'm Bob Millard, President of Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union. Come see us and experience banking as it used to be. It's time for sports on the Quinn Broadcasting Network. QBC brings you local sporting events, action pack specials and play-by-play -play coverage of the area sporting activities. From Pop Warner to college sports, Quinn Broadcasting covers it all. Join us now here on QBC for today's exciting event. Mike Trout Field, a huge win for the Millville Thunderbolts, getting their first win of the season, 10-9 over Ocean City. Ariel Melendez here with our two stars of the game. They wanted to go together, so we're going to do it together. Kevin Dick on my left, Connor Lacey on my right. We'll start with you, Kevin. We'll get to the home run in a second, but obviously a tough day on the mound for Gavin McGuire, but how good did it feel for you guys to get the offense going and pick him up? It feels great. I mean, we came out, we didn't come out to the best, but we came together and we got it done. feels good. Yeah, and obviously, obviously you had, you one, had of one of the loudest, loudest uh, hits, hits in this, this game. game. We, won't we won't go into, into what you what said you at the play. You're, you're, you're a guy that shows a lot of emotion. emotion. We've yeah, seen that yeah. from you. We've, We've seen, seen that from you last season, season this season. season. You're always you're someone, someone that, that lets everyone, everyone know how you're feeling. How, feeling. how did that how one feel off the bat? It felt great. I mean, went out there. I wasn't trying to do that. Just trying to hit the ball hard went. So it felt pretty good. 
I gotta control my language at the moment, sorry. <laughs> You're good, I don't know if that got across. We have a mic down there, so okay. that may have gotten got across us, but Brady Middlecoff, um, also with a big home run oh, yeah. for you guys. Got you guys on the board after Ocean City put up the four spot. Offense did really well for you guys mm -hmm. today, especially coming off of a no-hit game. How nice was it to see pretty much everyone in the lineup do something? It feels good because, I mean, last game we didn't have a hit. We were real slow, but we came out today and we did what we had to do, so it feels good. And Connor Lacey coming in in relief here. Again, talking about McGuire, tough for him. You ca you came in, pretty much shut things down. You had a really good couple innings. That off-speed pitch was really working for you. Is that something that you try to go to a lot? Yeah, which one? The changeup? <laughs> which, any of them. It was a lot of good movement you had it on it. It may have been the knuckle curve or the changeup. I was going to say, it was probably the knuckle curve because it looked like it had a lot of movement on there. But did you, you like to go to in certain situations? Yeah, I can throw any pitch at any moment as a first strike, anything in my arsenal. So it's really easy to, to just throw compressed natural gas and then come in with my all speed. And, and how nice was it that the offense really showed up? Obviously took McGuire off the hook. But you coming in, kind of settle things down. The offense really seemed to get the bats going. Tough day for you at the plate. Obviously, a couple hard hits to second base for the second baseman really kind of got you on that one. But how good was it that, again, everyone came together, everyone stood up for McGuire and really got this one going for you guys? Yeah, it was good to actually get on the left side of the column and hit the ball. We got no hit last game and put up, what, at least 10 this game. Yeah, Four, so, 14 yeah, hits. Yeah, 10, yeah, 10 cool. runs, 14 hits. Um, for you, had a couple big strikeouts in that one. Again, you, you're also a guy that can get pretty pumped up um, in those big situations. Definitely got a little bit of help from Large in that last at bat, chased a little bit oh, up yeah. high, but how pumped up for, were for you, especially coming in and having those, that many relief innings. And it almost came back on you, but I'm sure that felt good as well. Well, it, it felt good because I knew I was going into the seventh and it wasn't going to be an easy one with the top of the lineup up. And it was, one of, it was just I had to go out there and throw. And how nice was it that Fimiani gave you that length, gave you all of those relief innings. You did a really good job with them. Didn't, they got a couple hits off you, obviously, a lot more in that last inning. But yeah. that you had the trust to close it out. Yeah, I, me, and, me and Coach Fim have a really good, really good relationship now. So it's like, like we, were, we were always close, but now we're really close. So he trusts me in certain situations that, that we need. And right there was a good one. So. And I'm going to make each of you say something nice about each other. So how how big was Kev how big was Kevin's home run? It was really big. It was you know it was something Edwin would do. It was a, it was a good hit. <laughs> okay. 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 And and how good in relief was Connor for you guys? Oh, Connor's a dog. He just goes there and throws. So <laughs> they got him a little bit, but kind of got him more. So it's good. I, I had to put you on the spot there. I just wanted to see if you guys would say something nice about each other. I love other. Connor. But just in the end. I love you too, Kevin. <laughs> You guys finally get a win on the season. You beat an undefeated team as well. Whoever wants. Well, they rather be one out and tying runs up from second base. You wind up getting two strikeouts to finish it. I just. I know you're a veteran player, <laughs> but that's got to be some pressure. I just stepped off and I was like. I just cleared my mind and looked at who was up and realized that I had better stuff on the mound than they did swinging the bat all day. Every time I faced them on the mound, my off speed, they couldn't do anything with it, so I decided to beat it into them. Actually, on the last kid, he hit the curveball really good last time, and I started him with a curveball and then went two fastballs and struck him out for the game. So yeah, Again, Melville finally getting a win on the season, doing it against the undefeated Ocean City team that's really put uh, the bat on the ball this season. A huge 10-9 to win. Again, our two stars of the game, Kevin Dick with the big home run, Connor Lacey doing a great job in relief. We'll be back to tally the rest of things up, so stay with us here on Quinn Broadcasting. We'll be right back. Many people treat their health like a game. With Complete Care Health Network, it's easy to start your health care journey. Just select from our specialties and schedule online, by phone or on our app. Our entire team communicates with one another, so everyone works together on your total health. Plus, we make it even easier with all of these additional benefits. Level up your health with us. Complete Care Health Network. No gains, just great health care for everyone. Life on Earth offers some challenges. Things are constantly changing. Seems like we're fighting battles all the time. But you're a warrior, a warrior for God. And he's given you the armor of God. Join Pastor Myers for this exciting series on how to be equipped to win. It begins May 5th at 11 a.m. New Life Church, Millville, New Jersey.
At Mintz Insurance, we're proud to have been serving our customers for nearly 80 years, offering 30 different insurance products for your auto, home, and business. And to help ensure that you're getting the best rates possible, we give you up to three quotes for every policy, so you can choose what's right for you. At Mintz, we're part of the community. Local representatives, supporting events, and proud of it. It's part of who we are. Mintz Insurance. Call today and find out how we can help you save on insurance, or visit us at mintzinsurance.com. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is your hometown team for banking. We offer banking which is small town focused and customer based. We know you and we are for you. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union is a nonprofit and federally insured. Solid as a Thunderbolt airplane, we are your team. Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union, 1601 Cedar Street. Hi, I'm Bob Millard, President of Thunderbolt Area Federal Credit Union. Come see us and experience banking as it used to be. High School Baseball. It's live on Twin Broadcasting. Well, we're back at Mike Trout Field, and the first wins never come easy, especially when you're facing an undefeated team as Ocean City is, and they had scored something like 27 runs in the last two games against Buna. So they could put runs on the board. They showed it in the first inning when they scored four runs right from the get-go. Uh, Millville did a good job of cutting that lead in half in the bottom of the first, and they kept chipping away. Ocean City uh, regained a 6-5 to five lead. The uh, big three-run homer, of course, uh, by uh, Br uh, Middlecoff, Kevin. Kevin, yeah, Kevin Dick, yeah. No, yeah. no, I'm talking about the other one. Brady, uh, Brady. He's the on one the that had that big three-run homer that tied the game. And then, of course, Kevin Dick put him ahead in that, uh, I guess it was a five-run rally in the fifth inning, fourth inning. It was I a thought five Kevin Dick was the one that Kevin tied Dick it. put him down no, right there. Middlecoff tied it at five. That Ocean City got a sixth run. And okay. then... I'll it was there. Dick's home run that put Millville ahead, and then they rallied for the rest of the runs that held up in the end. They needed every one of those 10 runs, as it turned out. So uh, big home runs by Brady Middlecoff and the uh, go-ahead home run by Kevin Dick. And the big climactic finish, it never ends without a little suspense, but again, uh, Connor Lacey and company got it done, the last two strikeouts, uh, to make it a 10-9 final. And Millville's finally on the winning side of the, uh, the ledger. Yeah, and they got it done. A, a lot of different players in this lineup really uh, stood out. 14 hits, especially after getting no hit. Uh, Melville broke out in a big way in this one to get their first win of the season. As you said, it, it, it doesn't come easy. It, it never does, especially against a team like this. But for Melville to, to gut this one out, answer runs when they needed to, and, and hold on in the end. Yeah, they needed every one of those, especially five runs. And that, and that turns out to be the biggest difference. Ocean City did everything they could to get back in this one at the end. Had the go-ahead runners on base, uh, could have broken it open uh, with one big swing of the bat. But a nice job by Lacey in relief. He pitched four or five? Four innings. Uh, four innings in relief? Yep. Uh, four innings pitched, five strikeouts, one walk, one hit batter. And uh, he did a great job in relief to uh, keep the score within realm, and then the Millville offense did put it together. And, again, it was a team effort looking up and down the lineup. You see where all the runs were scored. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different players scored, and most of them got involved in the hits as well. So that's how you win ball games. a team effort, no doubt about it, for Millville, that big double play that helped them out in the middle of the game. So the Thunderbolts put everything together, and uh, they come away with a victory. Yeah, and a couple big strikeouts by Lacey, too, at the end. He talked about his, his off-speed working a little bit and kind of gave us a little insight into how he was approaching that last at-bat with Large. Said he got a hold of the curveball earlier, um, earlier in the game, and he starts him with the curveball. Uh, so he wasn't afraid to go back to that pitch, even though Large got a piece of it last time. So that shows you how much he trusts that off-speed stuff. And, and I like him talking about the relationship between him and, and Fimiani. Now, he came up last year. Uh, from the JV squad and had a chance to make an impact uh, down the stretch. Now as one of the veteran players um, on this team, one of the seniors, uh, Mobile I think has got quite a lot of seniors on this team, but to have a leader like that, you have a great relationship with your coach. He trusts you mm -hmm. in those situations because he really let Lacey get through uh, that seventh inning and, and 
even though he got hit around a little bit, shows how much trust he has in Lacey to get stuff done, and, and he pay, and it paid off for him. Yeah, Connor hit the ball well all four times. He had two hits. Um, he didn't score one of the runs. There it was a pinch runner involved as well. But uh, the two outs that he made were pretty sharply hit. The second baseman just made good plays on him. So Lacey had a good game. Kevin Dick had a great game. Uh, Sergio Draws helping out on that double play ball that got Milton yeah, out of an inning. I think just about everyone, yeah, if not everybody everyone, contributed. had a hit. Uh, Jacob Butcher had two hits. Hoffman Caleb, got on Hoffman, base a couple times. Yep, he, it looks like everyone did have a hit in this game. That is correct. Even uh, Mario Cottrell, he had a single in that uh, rally that uh, got the game tied at five. So everybody contributed today, and uh, everybody who uh, brings us these broadcasts deserve credit too. Uh, we are talking about the, the men behind the cameras so far, Jordan Robbins and Steven Bostrom. Of course, uh, Pastor Richard F. Myers, all the graphics you see, not only on the baseball side, but on all the sports we do, he puts them together for us. So we definitely want to give him credit. George Cuchilla as well. Uh, George Cuchilla is back at the studio making sure we're on. And uh, we had a little Internet problem because of the weather and all that, but we managed to get through it. And we hope you enjoyed today's game because it was a thriller end to end. It looked like it was going to be an Ocean City kind of day at the get-go. But uh, Melville just battled and battled and got it done today. Uh, of course, I need to make mention of our director, Ryan Narowski, Ariel Melendez, and Fred Melendez here. We hope you enjoyed today's game. We'll have a couple more this week. We have a violent back-to-backer on Thursday and Friday, so make sure you tune in for those games. The rivalry Thursday and Friday. Now, Friday night, I understand, is a 7 o'clock start, and uh, we'll be streaming that. I'll be broadcasting from the studios. That'll be at Vineland High School, so we'll be at the studio doing that game. But we invite you to join us for all these activities because they're all supercharged up. Today's game was spectacular from both teams, and uh, we want to bring you these kind of games to have our endeavors no matter what season it is. So for all the entire staff here at Quinn Broadcasting, Fred Melendez wishing well. Don't forget to follow us. Yep, you can follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. It's uh, qbc.tv. And you can subscribe to Quinn Broadcasting on YouTube Live. And, of course, the games are in Channel 22. Thank you, everybody, for commenting on the uh, game and watching. We hope they do it again later this week. Have a good night. And our final score, once again, Millville defeats Ocean City 10-9. to Have a great night, everybody. This has been a QBC television production, in association with our partners and sponsors. QBC broadcasts on Comcast Cable Channel 22, and live streams its programming on Facebook and YouTube. All rights reserved by Quinn Media and QBC, programming that serves the South Jersey market.